What is up, everybody? We are back with another live stream today. In today's show, we're going to talk about how to build a passive income business for what I would consider a reluctant person who wants to do it. Who's joining me today? Robert Ranitsky is joining us, and we're going to be talking about building a passive income business model. Here's a couple of things I want to tell you right up front about Robert. Here's what I know. He's a freelance motion designer. He's been doing this for a really long time. He's based out of Munich, Germany. So, willkommen, everybody. And he works on trailers, opening titles for a couple of notable clients. And I was looking through his client list. And these were just the A-lettered clients because there's a whole B, C, D, and whatever. Adobe, Apple, Howdy. I don't know. Have you heard of them? Maybe. And I also know that he speaks and lectures a lot. He's spoken at Con, Adobe Creative Days, and Maxon. And the reason why we're talking today is because we bumped into Robert at Adobe Max this year. It was one of those really nice serendipitous moments when, when I see someone and we talk and we connected. He describes himself as an old school influencer while we're the <laughs> new school influencers. And this is where our worlds overlap. And I want to share some things and uh, show some of his work. Yep. But here's the little funny thing. I think he might be a fan of Star Wars. Star Wars, but we'll get into that a little bit. First up, I want to show you a little demo reel so you know who Robert is. He's totally legitimate. He's a he's a person who does a lot of demos and speaks for Maxon Cinema 4D, guys. So those of you guys that are into motion graphics, enjoy this reel. Mark, let's play the Awesome work, wow. dude. Let's that welcome good. Robert to the show. Robert, how are you doing? Hello. Good to see you. Good morning, everyone. Good to see you all. Thank <laughs> we, you for, for having me. Absolutely. It's, uh, I'm glad we're able to do this. I'm seeing all kinds of people saying, wow, dope. They're reacting to it. Love the music. And I just want to say something. We've not brought on a lot of motion designers because generally speaking, there's music attached to their work. And then the content gets flagged from, from YouTube. So... Robert actually cleared all this music, so hopefully this episode will continue to live on. There's like, wow, wow, wow. <laughs> and welcome, everybody. That was amazing. Uh, okay, so, Robert, I'm not going to distract you with all the comments because you're getting a lot of positive <laughs> comments or killer work. Hello from Spain. Welcome, Robert. There's a lot of people looking forward to having this conversation with us. Now, you're in your office right now, right? I am, yes. Yes, with perfectly Correct. combed, gelled hair. And this is what his hey, office hey, hey, looks can like. I, yeah, okay, go ahead. Can I just interrupt you for yeah, a yeah, sec? Yeah, go ahead. Before I forget to say, um, first of all, big thanks for, for having me. And also thank you for everything that you're doing for the community. Um, you know, the, the thing is, I, I just really enjoy what you guys are doing. Um, no matter if it's the design work or the teaching work, um, everything. So uh, a big thanks for that. Thank you, Robert. That's you awesome. know what I love too? I got to say this, guys. Let's just take a moment and be present to what's going on. I don't know Robert until I run into Robert at Max. And we feel like we know each other because there's this relationship that's built because of the content we produce. And we start hanging out and seeing a lot of each other and just talking about life and business and family and the things he's trying to do. And I think you guys are definitely going to stick around for the entirety of this episode because I think by having this conversation with him, we're going to try to recreate some of this so that you guys can come on board with the conversation as if you're just hanging out with us, okay? I do want to show you what kind of geek Robert is because let's take a look at his office. Look at this. First, I thought this was his home. So I was thinking, wow, this is a big house and your partner lets you get away with all this stuff. And we found out, no, she doesn't, you know, and look at his office. Look at this. There's even more Star Wars and Marvel stuff and toys and books. This is the dream. He's got a cool 
Eames lounge chair in there. Guys, he's got good taste. It's very clean. I expect nothing less from a German. It's very clean and just <laughs> perfect. perfect. It's Perfection. perfect. And it's not almost perfect. They just, they're the engineers of the world. Everything's perfect. Like that, those Ali Moss prints, you see those? They're perfectly lined up. Precision there. You come into our office, they're all crooked and somebody knocked <laughs> it and there's a, a dent in the corner. Here's some more stuff here, right? And it's a Star Wars helmet. So I'm going to show one more clip, one more clip before we actually dive into the meat of this. Because if you weren't blown away, I mean, prepare to be. Because here he is. He's going to take us through. Hey folks, I'm Robert Ranitsky and I'm the director of the Tokame opening title sequence. I would like to walk you through some of the things that we did to create this film. It was really awesome to work with some talented friends and artists like Daniel Henjes, Michael Münch, Andy Thoma and Michael Farkas. We spent a lot of time thinking about the concept and how to match this year's topic, Dream Big. We had ideas of showing a sleeping girl that is dreaming of creativity and ideas. For inspiration, we looked at a lot of images containing lights and projections and then created a mood board with some of our favorites. Our vision was to only illuminate the sleeping girl's face by projecting artwork from each of the artists that is speaking at the Tokame conference. We carefully had to curate all the artwork from the artists to find something that would work as a projection setup. Each of the artwork was turned into a black and white image with a raster effect to make it more like a projection. We also added some chromatic aberration and some imperfections. Daniel Henjes created this amazing 3D scan of this girl's face that we used to be able to go into a macro level of detail. Phil Amalung cleaned up the 3D scan using ZBrush. All the 3D animation was done in Cinema 4D and we wanted to base everything on the real world. So for example, we used only focal lengths that would really exist. Daniel made a setup for Cinema 4D that allowed us to use the artwork and project it onto the face of the girl and let it illuminate by using global illumination. Before we even rendered a single frame, we quickly created an animatic that we can send off for editing and also music creation. Michael Munch worked with the animatic on the edit that we could then use to define the final length but also send it over to Andy and Michael for music creation. For the musical part, we gave Andy and Michael a few cool tracks that we like and thought will work really well for this piece. All they had to work with at the beginning was a rough animatic, but with each frame we gave them, the music as well as the visuals grew together to become the final piece it is right now. When it came to render, we found out that the average frame took between one and one and a half hours to render, but some frames were even going up to four hours to render. So it was really tricky, but thankfully Google Cloud Platform supported us, offering us Zinc Render as a rendering solution. So we could use up to 500 machines with a total of 16,000 cores to render all the frames and to really pull this off in time. After we finished rendering all the frames, it was time for compositing. We used After Effects to composite all the shots. By using Cineware, we could extract the Cinema 4D camera as well as a null object that was used as a particle emitter source. Particular was used to create floating dust specks. The separate volumetrics pass was used as a mask for all the particles, so they are only visible in the volumetric light. Then we adjusted the particle size, so everything was matching the original camera movement that we created in Cinema 4D. Multipass layers, especially the depth channel, allowed us to create a depth of field effect in After Effects, even after rendering, so we could really focus on certain areas. So we used Frischloft LensCarp to create the macro level depth of field that we wanted to have. Then we added a lot of camera imperfections like chromatic aberrations and several blurs to give it the final look. For the final shot, we want... Woo! Oh my goodness! Oh. <laughs> All right, so if people went silent on the chat, they're like, oh, oh my God. People talking about the render time. This is deep work. Some next level I did not stuff. do this alone, uh, I must say. <laughs> uh, my good friend Daniel Henjes, uh, who's responsible for most of the 3D part. Yeah. Uh, 
he's a crazy geek about uh, you know doing photo real 3D scans that are that are so just absurdly real and detailed. So actually, all the cravings of the lips you can actually fly through them because it's not bumped. But oh, it's actually okay. really, really modeled. Mm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Rico is saying this guy is from the future. <laughs> yes, he is. All right. Why did I want to show you guys all that work? You know, we're not here just to huddle around somebody's amazingness, which he is pretty amazing. But I just want to let you know he's a super legitimate artist. And I think this is a way for us to jump into the conversation with Robert, which is this is Robert's a freelancer. He's been working as a freelancer. And without disclosing how much money he makes, he told me he makes a lot of money. And you would think somebody of his caliber with the kind of clients he's worked for, he would make a lot of money. So my thing is, I think making that money and having uh, a partner and two kids, and he's got a family to support, he's got golden handcuffs on. I don't know if you guys have heard that term before. It's like you make money and you have to support your lifestyle and your family. And so it seems like you're kind of stuck doing that. It's a good kind of stuck because he makes a lot of money doing it. But then it kind of sometimes closes you off to other opportunities things that are risky because you just can't you can't go back right so robert one of the things that we started talking about is i asked you this like because you speak and you create educational products and we were just talking about before we went on air you created a really cool tutorial on how to build um a torn paper thing mm -hmm. and it looks so photo real and you said that thing went bananas on vimeo and people were checking it out and it was like six or seven years ago and people still were asking you like wow thank you man you really helped me mm -hmm. out so you already have all the components that I think to take yourself to the next level, which is to try to create some kind of product, a course, a kit, a template, a shader, something so that you can start to earn money while you sleep. And when I said that to you, I can't remember your exact reaction. So maybe we can pick up the conversation from there. So that's the context of our conversation right now. You guys know mm -hmm. he's super legit. So this is not some kind of poser trying to take a shortcut. I was just thinking, Maybe it's time for another part to your career that you can add to what you're already doing. So why don't why don't you just t share with me your thoughts on that? Well, um, like, like you already said, uh, it's 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 been there in my mind a mm -hmm. little bit. Um, like it's not totally new to hear about passive income or, or do something that is out there. It was just like I've kind of pushed it away or was, like you said, reluctant uh, about it um, for several reasons. Uh, Probably the biggest one was fear of new, maybe. Um, the mm -hmm. other one, maybe, um, well, not maybe, actually, it's a fact. I mean, um, just having to having to do work that actually pays the bills more or less immediately. Um, having, having big major projects that I work on alone, as well as with the great partners and friends that I have, uh, gives you very little time to do side projects, you know, because essentially it's, it's for me, it's, like the work that I'm commissioned to do and then it's off home to the family and then, uh, you know, spend family time. So, um, like years ago when, when, you know, not having kids and stuff, you know, you would spend an extra hour or two or three working on your personal project or, um, you know, doing, watching tutorials or just educating yourself a little bit now. And, and now that time more or less is very limited or almost gone because there was so much pressure on having to finish, uh, commission projects obviously so um I've, I've been chatting to a few for example stock uh stock people uh, and they were like yeah, yeah can you do templates for us can you mm -hmm. do uh, models or um i don't know after effects files or whatever and i was like yeah yeah i would love to they, they were begging me more or less and then that was like over a year ago yeah. and i still didn't do anything because there was simply no time and also i was a bit hesitant maybe a bit lazy um i must admit um so that was that was the thing, and and I do know that um, it's it's not something where you just, I mean, passive income sounds like like this like this, ah, you know. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know how do you, you say know, that in you German, know? though? Uh, how do you say the ha huh in German? What is it? The dream, um, the the, the, the rainbow with the the unicorn and the pot of gold and the leprechaun. It's like it's elusive, and it's like this magical nirvana place that we all want to yeah. get to, right, you guys? Yeah, yeah. It's the dream exactly. of all artists to be able to make something and to live off that thing that we we create forever or for at least some time. Musicians get it; they they write an album, and yeah. they go on tour, but when they stop going on tour, they still make money theoretically because their albums keep going on. Right. Um, filmmakers get it; they get points on the film. 
actors get it, they get points on the film. And so when there's a hit or a sitcom gets syndicated, they keep making money. So some of the right. people that are in Friends still pull in a ridiculous amount of money every single year. So they, are, they don't have to do anything that they don't want to. And I think we all desire freedom. We want that, right? right? We want more of it. We want more time. So I think what, what's interesting about you and, and what I think we're going to talk about is the mindset, which is he's busy working. And if he has any little time left outside of work, he wants to give it to his girlfriend, his partner and his kids. So now where is he going to find time? And it seems like for the immediate future, there's a lot of work with little reward where right now he can go and work on a project and bring home real money that he knows that it's dependable and it's there. So it's in our sight. So this is where I think we have to start talking about the long game and what happens to you in five years, in 10 years and beyond, right? Because you still look like a pretty young guy, but I know you have a lot of experience. So you're not, you're not in your 20s, right? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> You're not in your 20s. And so eventually, I think at some point, your body, your mind is not there anymore. And this industry really is notorious for chewing people up and spitting them out. That the young people coming out of school who are very talented too can trade on their time in lack of experience. And it starts to edge some of us out a little bit. And you're, you're probably one of the exceptional people who are still in demand and your career is on track and everything is good, but people on the margin start to get pushed out. We mm. know that this is going to happen at some point, unless you ascend into the place where you wind up being a technical director or a VFX supervisor or something like that, where you stay mm. on, right? Where you're not hands-on work anymore. But one of right. the other things that we talked about is in terms of the benefit of creating a passive income product, business model, something is... What happens to you if you get sick? Heaven forbid you're crossing the street, somebody slams into you, and now you can't work, and you're, you're, you, you have, your, your hands are in cast or whatever it is. I don't know. And mm. now you can't exchange your time anymore for money. And so the family's like, Dad, what are we going to do? So there's that responsibility. So mm. I think for all those reasons, I think maybe not for now, but for the future, it's worth it. It's like um, buying a mutual fund. It's not sexy. Mm -hmm. You put money mm -hmm. into it, you don't see a lot of return. But based on compounded interest, in 15, 20 years, it's worth a million dollars. Right. Right? So let's get into this because some of our dialogue um, during some of our, um, our conversations, our get-together was, I said, hey, man, you create content. You put free stuff out on Vimeo. You put stuff up on YouTube and you go out and you teach and you lecture. And for the most part, the event organizer flies you out, puts you up in a hotel. But, you know, after that, I'm like, that's kind of that's kind of it for you, yeah. Right. Correct. So right now we we are ultimately exchanging time, our time, for money. So if we can bake that time and knowledge into something, anything, we're gonna do better for ourselves. And it won't be much at the beginning. This is not a get rich quick scheme. This isn't about yeah. changing your entire life overnight because it's not gonna happen overnight like that. But I remember telling you, it's like we create all this content out there on YouTube, and then that's how people find out about us. And then you said to me, Chris, I get it. It's bait. And I said, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> you, you're trying to describe me like uh, it's kind of like a, a very negative light, like bait. I'm going to hook people and just throw them in the boat. And it was all a scam. So the first thing I want to say is this, is that how you describe and think of a situation, the words that you choose, it changes your perception. So if Robert says you're putting out content because it's bait because you really want to sell them this other thing, then he has a negative feeling about it, and he's not one to bait people into anything. You can see, like, he's really on. Look, look at him; he's so honest looking. He's like honest Robert. <laughs> there's, there's Lincoln, and then there's Robert, right? He doesn't want to do that. The artist in him chides against that, that idea that I'm gonna make stuff to like fool people or sell. It's, it feels like too salesy. It feels dirty. But what I wanted to say to you, Robert, is that if you create stuff for people, I think there's a lot of gratitude that's out there that doesn't mm -hmm. know how to repay you. And I think our society works, our, our culture works, whether you're in America or in Germany, is that we want to reciprocate. We don't want to be takers. We don't want to be leeches and loafers and all that kind of stuff. We don't want to overstay our welcome. So when you give value to the world, somebody wants to give you something back to say, thank you, Robert. So all we want to do is to create something convenient for them to say thank you. This could be a Patreon page. But when you build a Patreon page, it almost feels like sometimes you have to work for them because you have to 
do exclusives or behind the scenes. And then now you have two jobs on mm -hmm. top of being a parent. And that's a lot of work. So Patreon's one way. And we can get really creative. But I was just thinking, is there something that you've done over and over again, I'm sure, because you've worked a long time, where you feel like, you know what? That took me a lot of time to develop those resources. But I bet if I package that up, let's say it's a, a package of shaders or presets or lighting mm -hmm. setups that you use all the time. If you package it up and you sold it for 10, 15, 20, 30 bucks, whatever you want to sell it for, mm -hmm. that people would buy it because they need it and they could use it, but because they want to say thank you. Does that make it a little bit more palatable for you? Um, yeah, definitely. Definitely. I mean, it's interesting because one of the mindsets, for example, many years ago, um, and, and correct me if, if my feeling of that is wrong, but like maybe, I don't know, six, seven, maybe 10 years ago, mm -hmm. a lot of studios and, um, and artists seem to be very reluctant of, of showing off like the real secrets, if you want to say yes, so. Yes, the secret sauce. Um, the secret sauce, yeah. And, and, and I remember I did, I actually did a, a video tutorial series um, back with uh, video to brain they were called and they were um, bought by Linda, I think. Um, and uh, so I had like back when DVDs existed, you know, those old school uh, discs yeah. put in and, you know, something <laughs> plays. <laughs> the young people are like, oh, what are they talking about? Yeah, so uh, I had like uh, two two After Effects courses, um, and you know I didn't didn't make a lot of money on those, and I don't know if they sold well or not. But uh, I just wanted to get those out. But I remember very clearly when doing those, I was like, yeah, how how much do I do I show? How much do I tell? Like, do I go until here or here or here? Um, and and this is this has changed like in the last couple of years, I I, I imagine. Um, as well as as with me, you know, when I do a lot of talks, as you said, and right now I'm like, I'm not really keeping anything to myself, really, because I found that whenever you you share something, uh, it's like the karma principle. Mm -hmm. um, I was in an interview with, with Adobe back at IBC, uh, chatting with uh, Nick from Territory uh, and Sergey from Rukra Media, and uh, we developed the the hashtag MoGraph Karma. <laughs> so mm -hmm. um, that's kind of like a that's kind of how it is, you know, MoGraph karma and, and, and or general karma is like when you, I have the feeling that we really, like you said, when you, when you put something out, people say thank you. And, and I experienced that very dramatically with the, the paper tier tutorial. Um, people were asking like, Hey, how can I, how can I help you back? And I didn't monetize that. I didn't, um, I just put it out there because people were asking about it. And then I was like, damn, I could have, I could have done like a, like a Patreon thing or something on that. And, even if just everybody or like just half the people donated just one dollar, <laughs> it would be a significant amount. And um, yeah, but uh, this is this is how far how far I got with that. But um, it totally makes sense to to do something, um, hack something up, maybe like an After Effects setup, or uh, because there is stuff that I do over and over again just to create the look that I developed over the years. And uh, yeah. Mm. Okay, so it, it's been a couple of months since I, since I saw you last at Adobe Max, and I was thinking, have you thought about it more? Like, are you ready to move forward, or is there still a couple of things that are nagging at you where you think, I, I'm not ready right now? Because I want you to take well, action soon. Well, I mean, like one of the things we discussed was also like this old school, new school influencer thing. You yeah. know, I've been I've been an influencer for for companies like Adobe and Wacom for I don't know over 15 years now. Um, Oh, gee. Uh, back then, there was there was no YouTube and no Instagram and nothing. You know, I was yeah. uh, an influencer by chatting to people, saying like, "Oh God, man, you have to check out After Effects; it's really cool," or check out this this thing, um, just by word of mouth. And mm. um, you know, believe it or not, I mean, on Instagram, I have like three hundred something followers, and on YouTube, it's maybe five hundred. So I mean, it's like ridiculous little <laughs> amounts. And, and, and I remember talking to you about that, you know, mm. and and it just makes me think like, okay, so if I if I put out I don't know, a setup, whatever, a tutorial series, then, okay, wow, 500 people are going to know about it. I mean, I'm happy for those 500 people, but, you know, I'm thinking like, okay, if if you guys put something out or, I don't know, Andrew or something, then it's like instant, like hundreds and thousands of people seeing it, you know, like instantly. Um, with me, it's like, okay, it's a couple of hundred and maybe not even all of those that are following are actually going to see that because it's just so little. So, like, the number of 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 people that are following or, or fans or whatever um the little number is also maybe one of the things where i just go like ah maybe it's just not worth it because no one's gonna bother you know 
yeah, I see. Okay, so it, you, you're seeing the work ahead, and it's it's going to be slow goings at the beginning for sure. Okay, so that's one mm -hmm. thing. I'm going to write that down. It's going to be slow and hard. Okay, I get it. All right. And I, I want to clarify something because it was, it was funny when Robert told me this. I'm like, you're an old school influencer? Like, but yeah, but don't, don't check me out on Instagram or Twitter because the numbers would be so dismal, uh, like abysmally <laughs> small, right? What he's talking about was when he gives a thumbs up to a comment, he's doing it in real life. Like, hey, that was a good thing you did there. And you're you're out. So that means you must be out at conferences, at events and meetups quite a bit. Right. And yeah. you're also I don't know. I don't you don't strike me as a shy guy because you just started talking to me and we just hung out for a while. Right. So you have something that's unique. First, you go out a lot. And yep. you you already have a reputation. So people invite you to these things. So at least you're not paying for it. And you have a partner to take care of the kids while you're away. So there's some Correct. things working for you and you're not you're not super shy. So that kind of eliminates like eighty percent of our audience right now. <laughs> or ninety percent. And know? he's got so, amazing work. Yeah. Oh I uh, forgot about that Just part. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. And he does amazing work too. And thank you. So now <laughs> if you don't have all those things, how do you become an old school influencer? Well, let's try and broaden this thing out. Let's let's try and tackle the first thing that you talked about, which was Okay, I get a couple hundred views. It's not thousands or hundreds of thousands of views, uh, but let's make let's make this a practice. Let's see what happens if you actually put effort into it. And what I would love for you to do, and everybody that's watching this right now, is generate as many ideas as possible about things that you can create to help somebody else save time. Because what you're doing is you're selling their time back to them. This is what people need to understand. When we make a product, a course, I'm not selling you anything more than your own time back to you. Mm. So if I show you how to do something and you would have spent 10 hours looking for that, let's say you're worth $50 an hour, so I've saved you $500 worth of your time, and that's how you need to know that. So then sometimes people are like, well, my time's not worth much. Well, for those people where you have more time than money, go ahead and go and do all that research and find out things and try things out on your own. But when you get a little bit smarter about this, you're going to realize that your time is actually better spent thinking and making things and not trying to figure stuff out. So these are little shortcuts. You're buying somebody else's experience to save you time. So let's generate a bunch of different ideas. And if you guys have some ideas, go ahead and type it in the chat. Drop it in below right now and type it in. Maybe I'll start off the thinking a little bit here. Maybe it's a PDF on on step-by-step -step instructions on how to create like a cool look. How to create realistic looking paper. That, that right. could be a PDF. That's one idea. Maybe it's a five-minute tutorial on how to do something. Or it could be a keyboard shortcut guide or five hacks to achieve something in less time. Andrew Kramer is great at this, by the way. If you guys don't know, check out Video Copilot. He does a great job of finding the most simple way to do something that you didn't think could be done without using special plugins. He's a master at that. So he's going to teach you that, and then people wind up buying his products just to support him. And he's, he's got a really great business by doing that. So what other things can you do, Robert? Let's just kick, out, kick around some ideas. Go ahead. Me? Yeah, you're Robert. <laughs> I can't talk okay. to anybody else but you, so yes, it's you. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, that, that, I mean, the, the paper thing is, is, is probably a good idea, yeah. but, uh, you know, um, doing After Effects uh, templates could be another one. Um, mm -hmm. uh, like doing, preset templates, yep. Right, right. Doing stock models uh, was also yeah. an idea. Okay. Doing 3D models, mm -hmm. put them up on, on 5, Adobe Stock, etc. Yeah. Um, as well as, um, that's another thing, actually, um, that I think of it. Um, a lot of um, other great artists that are selling some of their stuff online on stock markets, uh, like not stock markets, but uh, footage stock. Right, stock assets. Um, mm -hmm. Stock assets. Um, it, I mean, some of them, like, uh, there's also a bunch of tutorials on YouTube saying, like, yeah, I have hundreds and thousands of clips and photos lying around um, that are just there that I shot in nature that are basically uh, not copyrighted or anything. You know, it's just like stuff that you are the owner and that. You, you created that you could technically just put out there you know if it could be a clip of, of a wave or I mean there's probably millions of that but who knows because someone might be looking for that so actually that's that's maybe something that that could be done um, without really having to create something but actually just looking for something um, that that will be definitely something I don't know if it's worth it really um, mm -hmm. I don't know how much how much you will generate but that could be something um, I was thinking of motion graphics templates um, for for Adobe, um, do, doing that. Um, since that's pretty new, I don't know how much there is. I know Andrew did a couple of those, mm -hmm. which are pretty sweet. Um, 
but yeah, uh, these are these are like some of the initial ideas. Yeah. But also, but also uh, like the teaching part. Um, it's very. It's actually. It's funny now. Now hearing it from someone externally, uh, especially someone that has a reputation like you, it's kind of like yeah, you're actually right because people like my talks. I mean, I'm don't want to sound off arrogant or something, but I get positive feedback and comments like, okay, that was really nice. And I appreciate that. Um, so it must be, there must be something that people enjoy about that. And um, hopefully, yeah, maybe I can build on that and probably expand and I don't know. Yes. So n without ever having gone to one of your talks, without even watching your tutorial, I already know, Check that, them out there on I already know that you're good. <laughs> I already know that you're good. You know why? It's because people keep paying you to come out and speak again and then there's an audience and if you sucked if you weren't a good presenter if you didn't know your material if you didn't make learning fun they would not invite you back that's how mm. you know so even if you're not like well, i don't know if it's any good so you already have a bunch of talks you've prepared you can easily convert that and i want to share a couple of stories so see so hearing you talk and just opening it up there's so many ideas that are coming now mm. i just want to say hello i don't know if it's the the, the man himself nick but grayscale gorilla's in the house he's like what's up robert so uh, hey, we got the whole community coming in and look at that you guys we're 424 yeah, people watching live stream. right now i like this man maybe we need to do more motion content or hey, something like that follow robert's channels i put so, the youtube instagram and there you go Vimeo so let's just there. say it out loud what is robert's channel you can find him at robert ranitsky and there's a silent h in there it's h-r-a-n-i-t-z-k-y right mm -hmm. okay so you can check him out he doesn't have a ton of subscribers right now but let's change that today let's do it okay guys and we'll include the link in the description below all right so let's keep going here so you came up with some ideas and and matthew was saying hey why don't you just teach how you built old projects that's really low-hanging fruit you can take mm -hmm. say a clip from um one of your your title sequences for the conference or maybe for audi mm -hmm. something that you can use and start to build these things. And here's one thing I want to say to you guys, though, right? Because we love Adobe. We do. Adobe, you hearing this? Sponsor us. <laughs> we love Adobe. But when you said, like, maybe I'll build stock and put it on Adobe stock, and that's cool. But I don't like that idea. I no. want you to build your platform for your audience, for your community. Because when you use somebody else's platform, unless it's for the future, that's a whole different story because we'll take it, <laughs> right? Is you can use your own platform so they can feel a one-to-one -one connection with you, not through some middleware, not through some platform. Because then those companies take the lion's share of the money. And they're supposed to because they spend all the time building it. So I would love for you to create a little community or a product or something and you just sell direct. You can say, hey, if you guys like my tutorials, just if you want to say thank you, the, you can buy my models, but you don't you don't need to. It's there. Right. So that's where you, the artist, capture the most value. Now, I saw this in the comments and because people don't always read the comments, I do need to say something because I didn't do a very good job. But what is passive income to begin with? What does that mean? Let's talk about it. Passive income doesn't mean that it requires no work. It actually requires a lot of work. Otherwise, everybody would do it. It means that you spend a lot of time writing, crafting, creating, documenting, editing, refining, and packaging up your knowledge. You put it together into something, and then it becomes a product. The product isn't like a real tangible thing in most cases. It's a digital thing. It could be a Lightroom preset or a color correction preset to get that cool blue-green look or that cyan, orange look, whatever it is that you want to do. You package that up, and then you put it out for sale. So when you're sleeping, eating, on vacation, playing with the kids and cooking dinner, somebody buys it. And that's how we sustain ourselves right now is we have knowledge products that people buy. And so no matter what, like right now, while I'm talking to you, we're still making money. Orders are still coming in to the tune of about, I don't know, north of now five, seven, ten thousand dollars $10,000 a day. Money just keeps coming in. That's what happens for us. So it does take time, though, because it. You're going to have to build it, and it, it, it will require work and effort. So that's what a passive income business is. Some people mistakenly say, I have a passive income business because my clients pay me a retainer. That is not a passive income business because you actually still have to work to earn that money. Okay? So put the work up front and reap the rewards down the line. It's like that mutual fund that we talked about. Okay, let's keep going. Are there some questions? I see Matthew's watching this, so one of our creative directors is watching this. 
I think Ben is on here too, or I don't know. There's a couple of our people on this yeah. stream right now. Yeah, a lot so, of people they they love the motion work and they'd like to see a lot of that from you. So there you we, go. You've already struck some interest with the audience. Cool. I appreciate that a lot. Yeah, and then on a personal note, I think it'd, it'd be great to see a lot of your products being sold out there, like you already are. But I think since you have a good stage presence. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, getting to know you as a teacher, I think, would even solidify the deal if I was to buy your product. So, you know, doing these mini tutorials would be great for, you know, you to engage with the audience. That's just how I personally feel. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. Yeah. All right. What else? What else can we talk about? Like, how do we get Robert across the finish line? So there's going to be work. So there's a lot of questions about what platforms to use. Now, Depending on how ambitious you are, how good you are with technology, how much free time you have, let's first talk about how we create more time for ourselves. I get it. You're a parent and you're... Are you the sole breadwinner? Does your does your partner work? Uh, yes. Uh, she wow. started working half a year ago again. Uh, she's in marketing, so uh, that takes off a little bit of the pressure. Okay, uh, good. But we, what we decided for, the, for both of our kids uh, for two years, uh, almost two years, uh, they both get like the the full attention of at least one parent full time. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. So that put a lot of pressure on the other part. <laughs> having to, <work. laughs> to hustle and get work, right? So, yeah, but it was worth it. I mean, the kids are great. And um, so, uh, yeah, but now it's, you know, it's been incubating for, for, for a while, but now it's becoming more and more, you know, more and more important and, and uh, current. And, and also when she asked me, like, so where, where are we going to be uh, in five to ten years? I was right. like, hmm. <laughs> Damn, I don't even know where I'm gonna be tomorrow, you know. So right. um I mean I, I love I love my work, I love what I do, but at the same time, you look at stuff out there that, that other artists are putting out and you just go like man. And then um it just makes you wonder like how, how long can you do this? And I'm not working too crazy hours anymore, um, because I'm fast, but also to try to manage my time better. But at the same time, I'm kind of like, okay, so here's the thing, like what's gonna happen in five to ten years? Uh, do I still want to do that? Um, not if I can do it, but do I want to do that? And right. that's that's been nagging on me for for some time. But uh, it's nagging more and more uh, now that you uh, you grow older and you see you see things differently. Yeah. So that's kind of what happens. We go through these arcs, these phases in our life. At the beginning, we're just happy to get work, and we're happy to work on cool projects. And then we kind of hit some some momentum, and we want to ride that for as long as we can. But then you start to enter into another phase where you become more reflective and think. Can I be doing this for another 10 years? Do people want me to do this for another 10 years? What's going to happen to me in my life and my career? And how can I do more of what I love and do less of what I don't love? So let's talk about this. We all... But also, but also, okay, but also sorry to interrupt, but also um, what's what's been you know going on in my mind as well is, is also like for me, and I've been telling this in presentations and in classes as well, I uh, actually just got off uh, teaching um, a few nice young students uh, here at the design school in, in Munich. And I, I said the exact same thing yesterday. Um, like, whatever, whatever I do, it's it's not it's mostly most probably not saving a life or something. So it's not it's not that I'm a doctor. Or I'm not putting myself out there. To just a lot of lot of designers and artists take themselves way too seriously, and it's like oh, it's like the middle of the world, and and it's actually it's not 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 by making any work or art small. It's just like it's just work, and it's just like art, and especially if it's commercial work, it's like doing like another pack shot of another product. Yeah, it is fun to do it, but in a year from now, or maybe even f if sooner, no one's going to care about it because there's a new product, there's a new, right. there's a new car, there's a new thing. And so I was just wondering and questioning the value of the work that you're doing, you know? Um, and then I thought, wow, it's, it's, I don't know. Uh, if, if you work in the feature film business, obviously that has culturally and creatively maybe maybe a higher value you know because people are going to watch that in a couple of years and go say like oh wow okay that's cool or that's amazing um but for as as like ads and commercials it's kind of like yeah it's it's been nice you added all those nice little glows and highlights and everything is like super slick but then no one's going to bother about that in a year or two so that's that's one of the things that i was wondering like how much how much value are you creating um in 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 an emotional way and and this this was coming off from from a talk I gave in uh, I think in uh, what was that I think in Hungary uh, in Budapest and mm -hmm. there was this young kid asking me like hey what what should I do with my life my parents want me to do uh, what was that I think physics or, or mathematics to study that but he's really an artist and he wants to do art and 
wants to do graphics and everything. So what, what can I do? And I was, I was shocked about that question because I felt that responsibility telling someone something. And I just wrote him like a two page letter or email uh, saying like, okay, so here's, here's what I would do. Um, do we have to decide your own thing? But he was so super grateful. And um, actually I should follow up. I don't know what he chose to do, but um, you know, that, that gave me something that's maybe more important than the joy of just creating another nice rendering. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. I, I wrote down some notes here. So I think you've given me a lot of material to kind of think about and work <laughs> on here. Okay. So first of all, there's the issue of time. Robert mm. is getting a little breather because his partner's going back to work. So the, the pressure for him to produce isn't as great as it used to be. But here's the thing. We're all given the exact same amount of time, each and every single one of us, which is 24 hours in a day until they change that. So what we have to do is we have to figure out a way to find more time. And how do you do that without radically changing your life? I want to give more prescriptive advice on how to do this. That isn't a total radical departure, because if I do, people are going to not do it. They're going to recoil and say, I can't do that. That's too extreme. I have too much going on in my life. So here's what we're going to do. We have to exchange something we want for something that we don't need right now. So we got to get rid of a couple of things that we don't need. So it might be that you're really into soccer slash football or doing something that isn't really contributing to one of your two or three goals. You need to make money. So that's what you do as a freelance designer, right? You need to be a, um, a parent and a partner. You need to start to build up your brand and your passive income business. So anything that doesn't fit directly into those three categories, what I'm going to ask you to do is find three hours a week where you can work on your passive income business. So that might mean cutting out a little bit of Netflix binging or <laughs> the, the, the Walking Dead or something. Or maybe you, you don't read or watch the news as much as you used to. So you're going to give up something, and this will be the least painful. This is like a very gentle pulling back the Band-Aid, not just tearing it off, which is normally what I would tell people to do, is let's do that. Okay, so let's find a little bit of time so you don't have to radically change anything. It might mean waking up an hour earlier and going to bed an hour later on certain days. And then you can find the time. And that's really all that's about. There's so many videos out there. They talk about successful people and how they wake up at the crack of dawn because they can get more stuff done. I don't know mm. if that's necessarily true because you'll just go to bed earlier. What you have to do yeah. is you have to expand your day. That's it. That's one way. And the other way is to get rid of a couple of things that you can do without. And we all have that. If you audit your life, your week, and you look at and you record everything you do in a week, you'll find that you're spending a lot of time doing something that's totally unnecessary. For example, maybe you're on Facebook too much or you're on Instagram or maybe you're watching some dumb guy on YouTube too much. I don't know. <laughs> and you're not getting value from it. I don't know. I'm not saying our channel, but you know, maybe you're watching too much of something that's not really helping you move forward. Right. Not excluding this channel, guys. Come on. Let's be real here. All right. So here's here, I got some ideas for you, man. So... You're a, a solo guy, right? You're a freelancer. I am freelancing, yeah, but I do have, I mean, actually, it's a shared office. So behind me is, is uh, Daniel's, Daniel's room. Um, over there is Max and Chan, and we're all freelancers. Um, all, all great artists, but we do collaborate on, on projects if, if time, budget, and, and the necessity of the project itself allows, then, I then we do collaborate. Mm. But so sometimes I do all the stuff, yeah. It's a co working space. There's three of you guys, you guys share the rent, and you, you yeah. do your own business. Okay. So right. here's, here's a very simple thing. What if we created a new series, a very finite amount of time, when you call it something like Learn with Robert? So here's the thing. There's a dual benefit for you. What i like for you to do is bring some young designer who's very teachable, coachable, to come mm -hmm. in and give that person one simple skill to learn each week. And you guys document that. So first of all, like this is the grunt work I have to do. And I have to do it. And I'm very fast at it. So it's going to be very slow for you to do it. But let's say you have to do some roto work. Like I have to cut up things in Photoshop all the time. Or I have to label my files, whatever it is, because I want to be super organized so I can get to work. So all the stuff that somebody else can do, if you break it down to an outline of 15 things, 12 things to teach somebody. If you want to be like me, these are the 12 things you're going to master. And I'm going to teach one skill to one person. And everybody that jumps on this program with you can watch in real time as you document and videotape and screen share the whole bit so they can be your virtual apprentice. Mm -hmm. 
That way, you're going to get two pieces of value from this. One is you can get back some more of your time because you're buying his time in exchange for your time back or her time, okay? Mm -hmm. So that person could be your apprentice. You have space for it. They can help you with some stuff. Or maybe you come in a little later and they could just use your computer and say, you know, uh, you come in from 6 to 10 a.m. and you do these tasks and we have a two-hour crossover where I train you. And then every week you need to learn a new skill and so you need to master this and you need to go. And if you can't learn it, that'll be the end of it. I'm going to bring somebody else in and we're going to keep doing this. And everybody gets to watch and learn with you. Mm -hmm. That's low-hanging fruit, like a, right? Sounds like a good idea, yeah. Because you're a natural teacher already. And then that'll force you every week to write some content to teach what it is that you're going to share with this person in a very simple way. So my son said to me, Dad, uh, you know, you're, you're homeschooling me. What's going to happen? Like, how am I going to get to Art Center? Because that's where I'm going to go someday. I'm like, over my dead body? <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> I'm not going into debt for that because I will teach you everything you want to know. So we're beginning the Art Center program with him at home right now. I can break down every skill and everything that I do with him in little bite-sized pieces. So our commute to work together when we're driving to and from the office, we have these decompression and setting up the day. I'm training the boy's mind. And then I'm going to teach him. He? He's 12. Okay. He's still like, oh, I want to play video games and read comics and draw. And, you know, so I don't want to destroy his childhood, but I'm going to slowly <laughs> introduce concepts over and over again. So by the time he's ready to go to college, um, he won't need to. He'll be a self-learner and he'll acquire what I think are the fundamental skills. So if anything, he'll study philosophy or history or something that's not art because I think I can handle the art teaching part. So you can have a helper, you can create content, and you can start to build a community, and you can start to build some kind of income, and it won't be a lot of work for you. I'm mm -hmm. looking for like low-hanging fruit. Let's just go and grab that piece, okay? Look, Victor is already saying, I want to be that person. Take me <laughs> into consideration. <laughs> you already have people. So you guys, let's, um, let's get in touch with Robert. Let's bomb his Twitter and his Instagram or whatever it is. Uh, what is, I, I know what it is, but um, Robert, how do they get in touch with you on Twitter or Instagram? Uh, on, on Twitter, it's uh, HR Animation. It's like my initials, HR Animation. Yeah. And on Instagram, it's HR Animator. Okay, I actually have the slide right here. I was prepared. But Jonah didn't see it. There we go. There he is, you guys. There you go. Hopefully, I spelt everything right. So, Animator and Animation. So, when Robert makes an announcement, when he's ready for you, hit him up. <laughs> but you know what? What's really cool is you can build a relationship with him right now you can just first follow him and engage with his content comment on his channel on youtube show him that hey maybe we do need this thing enrico i already have too many children i cannot adopt you i'm sorry it'll be a virtual <laughs> adoption <laughs> and so I mean, ninja's like you beat me to it yes yes you guys okay it's hey, something i want to bring up yeah um mm. so i've been hearing a lot of um about you know how to optimize your time through some of the videos that we edit here but um I think this concept of double dipping has been pretty effective for some of our, <laughs> our people. And in the, I don't know how you're thinking of that, Chris. No, no, I, we're the masters of the double yeah. dip. I mean, we're like, quadruple dipping. So by double dipping, we mean as you're working through something, you know, recording that process and then using that as a piece of content. So, you know, if you're working on a commission project, you know, maybe it does take a little bit of time to set up and record that. But if that can also be turned into a piece of content to help people learn, mm -hmm. uh, that way you're kind of double dipping that time. There must be, obviously, there must be a clearing of, of, you know, some of the projects are super confidential, so you're not allowed to yes. exactly. show that. But there's there's definitely some projects where, where it's possible. Um, but it's, uh, so you mean like similar to what you guys are doing, for example, with your recordings of, of classes and, and um, talks that uh, Chris is giving where, you know, people ask like, hey, so how, why is this logo so expensive or stuff like that? Right, right. Yeah, something like that. But I'll, I'll tell you right now, I'm going to give you guys a couple of life hacks right now. You guys ready? So this is really for Robert because I'm speaking to him right now. <laughs> but for everybody, they can grab this and you can catch it and bring it in. Okay? Here goes. This is the beauty. Like, I can coach one person, but hopefully thousands of you guys at the same time simultaneously. The next time you do a talk, Robert, just record yourself and record the presentation. You can use mm -hmm. lots of software to do that and package it up and sell it for 10 bucks. So you've already okay. done the work for the presentation. You have the energy... And you have the audience reaction and feedback, so it doesn't feel so weird. If you've ever tried to record yourself in your room by yourself, it's weird. It feels like you're losing your mind. 
There's no feedback, <laughs> and we need feedback, right? So when I say right. something, I see your eyes look away, or you kind of go like this, and I'm like, ooh, I, I stepped uh, too far. I stepped on your toes a little bit here. And if I say something, you laugh, it encourages me to give you more, so you laugh even more. So mm -hmm. that's what we've done. When we go to conferences, we record what we do. As soon as it's over, because it's my intellectual property, I just go package and resell it. Now, I give some separation between when I do the event and when I sell it so that people don't feel like, oh, I paid for the in-person experience and now the video recording is only 10 bucks. What? Mm -hmm. But you know what? The truth is the people who want to see you speak and present in person will come and see you in person. The people who want to read you in, in like book form will buy that. So give mm -hmm. people many ways to consume the content. It's why we have a podcast. It's why we write blog posts. It's why we create videos. And it's why we have a coaching community and why I do workshops. Because everybody wants to consume it a little bit differently. So this, we are the masters of the slice and dice and repackage because we've learned. Just because I want to teach this way doesn't mean somebody wants to learn this way. And that's the key. Give them what they want. All right? Now, mm -hmm. Anna is keeping me honest here. Anna, hi, or, hi, how are you? From I think she's from Vienna, Austria. She's like, what are the platforms? You, you were hinting at the platforms and then you didn't answer it. Well, I'm going to tell you guys right now. All right, there's many platforms that you guys can use to launch your knowledge product, okay? There's a couple. We'll tell you what we use and other ones that we looked into. Right now, we're currently using a combination of WooCommerce and Teachable. Teachable is a great platform to sell your knowledge products. You can upload videos. They'll, they'll store the videos. It's very secure, and people who pay for it can have access. You can control what is downloadable and what's only viewable. You can upload PDFs. You can make quizzes. It's pretty cool. It's built for teachers. Uh, one of their com competitors that we did look into, a more established player, is Kajabi. K-A-J-A-B-I, Kajabi. Okay? If you just want to make something that you can download, a product and not a video thing, you can use WooCommerce. You can also use Webflow. Webflow is... Uh, in beta right now, I think, their e-commerce thing, and you could build that. You can also use Wistia. Wistia is a little bit pricey, but it's very simple and it's bulletproof. You can basically lock videos. You can say, let them play six minutes of the video, and at this point, the rest of it, it triggers the paywall. And you can do that. So if your content is really good, people are diving in, they're like, wow, it's so good, I'm learning so much, and it stops, then they might pay for it. So Wistia allows you to monitor and give access to individuals, has a lot of control, and you can see how much of the course they've completed, which is really good. And lastly, and we've experimented with this, this is the lowest, easiest hanging fruit that you can grab, which is to use YouTube Premium. You can mark your content as premium and allow also people to watch a certain portion of it, a trailer, if you will, and then they have to pay for it, and you can determine the price. The only problem with YouTube Premium, and it's a big problem, is that YouTube takes 30% of the revenue, which is like, that's like the mob. Yeah, that's a 30% problem. <laughs> that's too much, exactly. I mean, I wish they did a 4 or 5%, something a little bit more reasonable, and that's probably why not that many creators are creating content for YouTube in that way. That's a lot. I mean, plus, given that not too many people are actually using premium, I, I suppose. I don't know numbers, but I see it once in a while pop up. Hey, do you want to try premium? You can download videos for offline. I'm like, oh, no, thank you, maybe later. So I don't know how many people are actually using it, really. Yeah. Or, or I mean, do you have to be subscribed to premium? or No, you can it... buy individual videos or, or buy premium. So if you, we did this right. before as, as a test, right? So we did the topography course, and we mm -hmm. originally sold it through YouTube, and we priced it really low, like 10 or 20 bucks a video. It's super cheap relative to the whole cost of the package because if the numbers support, like say... Usually some of our videos get like 10, 20, 30,000 views. If everybody, like you said, paid $5 or a dollar, then it can support you to do this, right? Mm -hmm. But that's the problem. People on YouTube are used to getting content for free. So they're a little reluctant to let go of some money. I get that. Because I would love nothing more than to create courses that you can buy for $2. But we need the volume to be there. So you can play mm -hmm. around with different models and see what works for you. But I was just kind of outlining some of the key platforms that you guys can try. If you want to use what we use, we just use Teachable. It works. It makes sense. Once Ben set it up, I'm able to add content and update things all the time. And here's the really cool part. Unlike traditional publishing where you have to get it right, you can't unpublish a book. You don't get a second chance, right? In the video space, if I don't like a piece of content, I just re-record it and swap out the video. If I want to add something because my my learning or my, my point of view has changed or evolved over time, I can just add more content. It's what we do. 
And those of you guys that are in our topography course or our, our logo design course, we just add stuff. We'll switch stuff out because I'm I'm never satisfied. So I, I can I can do that. And that's that frees me up as the artist who wants to make something perfect. Like you said, you're a bit of a perfectionist, that you don't get locked into that. You can actually so quick, quick update. question is is do they do they also host the, the videos? So basically yes. I mean, do they only do the, the selling part or also the hosting part or actually they both? do the whole thing. All right. Okay. Yes. And, and you can bundle courses together. Mm -hmm. You can cross promote. You can run an email marketing right. campaign um, where you can watch a free video and then it's going to send you an email in a sequence of things. They have a lot mm -hmm. of tools set up. It's not perfect. It's far from perfect, but it's pretty good. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And you can also do great. Vimeo, but Matthew is astutely pointed out. They're on a blacklist. Uh, they have shut down <laughs> our entire uh, video content because of a, of, of just a robot saying our, our 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 content violates intellectual property rights, even though we legitimately okay. worked on those projects. It's it's kind of messed up. It is, yeah. yeah. Sounds bizarre. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna move to YouTube anyway. Um, so um, we've we've had this discussion with yes. with you and and Nick um back in LA. And, yeah. You know, it's funny. I, I just jumped on the YouTube train just two years ago. <laughs> believe it or not, really. I mean, all all I was seeing was like just crap on YouTube and. The main thing, the main reason was because I was not logged in. You know, I, if yeah. you remember the the chat we had in LA, saying like like maybe maybe it's like a cultural thing, or maybe it's a German thing of being uh, like scared of being logged in and being tracked of what you watch and what you don't watch, etc. And I wasn't logged in, so I saw all those crappy cat videos and mm -hmm. people on bikes and like stuff that I'm I'm not interested in. But yeah. once once I logged in, and it kind of it learns about you, man. It le learned like, okay, so I, I, I watched a couple of After Effects tutorials. Oh, there's another one, which is cool. Then I watched a couple of tutorials about camera te techniques. And all of a sudden I see all those little recommendations and, and, and I stumbled upon Peter McKinnon as well. I'm like, holy crap, this guy is great. And mm -hmm. all of a sudden, like this whole world opened up of, of good content that I didn't expect to, to find. Um, because for me, it was just crappy cat videos. Uh, I don't know, I was, I was stuck in that. Um, in that uh, thought, you know, what, that, right. what YouTube is. And just two years ago, I just kind of caught up and, you know, subscribed to a bunch of great, great creators um, like you guys as well. You know, I was like, actually, the fun thing is, you want to know how I found out about you? How's that? Tell us, please. True, sto true, true story. Yeah. Um, so I was on Facebook and uh, I was scrolling through and it was like this recommended uh, content or whatever it's called, right? Like an ad like a sponsored ad or whatever. Mm -hmm. And it had, it featured you, uh, like it was like a thumbnail of you in class talking and, and the video didn't look like, a, it didn't look like a, like a, like a setup video. It was all like, okay, handheld. I mean, the, like a natural recording, you know, it's mm -hmm. no, no offense, but I, I thought like, okay, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what, what that is. And it keep coming up. And I didn't know you guys about, mm -hmm. uh, before that. And once I was like a headline, I was like, all right, I'm going to check it out. How, how good is that? It was like a year ago or something, one and a half years ago. So I don't know. And then um, I, I saw that the video and I was like, holy cow, this is gold. <laughs> it was so funny because I was like, wow, this is amazing. Like what you, what you were saying in that video was like absolutely mind blowing. And I was like, okay, wow, is, is there more from that? And then I saw that you have a channel and you have, then I thought, okay, it's all monetized or, you know, do you have to buy it? And then I found out you have like hundreds of videos that are, that I literally I can just recommend to any artist um, to watch it because there's just like really good um, information in there, mm -hmm. and and this is how I found out. And I was like, okay, so who's what, like Chris? What is he doing? Like, oh, he was with Blind, so I knew some of the work you did with Blind. Mm -hmm. And this was like, holy cow, <laughs> this guy's good. And then this is how this is how I found out uh, about uh, Blind in the future and everything. Well, awesome! Thank you very much for sharing that story. Do you remember how long ago you saw that video ad? That played i don't know i would have like two years ago maybe year and no, a half? Not that. no 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 maybe less maybe a year year and a half maybe because we only ran we actually believe it or not so all right we're gonna take a little detour here you guys we're gonna oh good job on the cut there jonah <laughs> cut on action baby <laughs> good job my guy's on it it's only, it's only third time at bat here he's, he's gonna hit it out of the park so here's the thing about that our channel was kind of like not growing as fast as I wanted to. And I looked at the video and like it only had 30,000 views. It's about how to price creativity, logo design and something like that. And we talk mm -hmm. about $18,000 logos, right? And right, so I was, video, yeah. yeah, I was looking for something to promote because we've never run ads on our own videos to promote it to, for people to watch. So I was brainstorming with Mark. I'm like, let me find the video where I'm the least offensive, the highest value content I have because... <laughs> 
People get mad at me all the time because I say bombastic things and I shake things up, right? I'm like, I think that's the safest video that we can do. And let's try it, Mark. So Mark figures out because he used to work at Google. He runs the ad campaign for us. And we start spending money. And I, and I missed, there was a miscommunication between Mark and I about how much money we should spend to promote that video. I thought we were spending a couple hundred bucks. And later on, Mark tells me, how much did we spend? Two grand? Just 2000 He said, oh, just 2000 Oh, sorry, Mark. Uh, he's like, easy to spend somebody's money. <laughs> so we spent two grand to do what? To promote a video that teaches you, you, how to make more money. There's no sales pitch. There's no link. There's no scam. There's nothing just to help you make money. So the weird thing was, that video started circulating and started popping up. And I think it caught on to a couple of people who weren't aware of it. So it popped on their radar. And we got mm. featured in a couple of blogs on design, like Creative Taxi, Creative mm -hmm. Block, or Design Taxi and Creative Block. And then all of a sudden, that video started to grow. Now, I believe that video is now the number one watched video on our channel. It's, it's about mm -hmm. to crest 1 million views. So from a lowly 30,000, we paid two grand to attain 970,000 more people to watch it. And it's a great video. Well, thank it's you. Great Thanks. Yeah. So that and thank thank you for sharing that because it's, I always wonder how people find us, and yeah, there's no scam. The Asian ball guy's not trying to sell you anything funny. It's no snake oil. It's just it's hard work, but you can do it intelligently, and that's that's probably what we're trying to help people with. I want to thank Rodrigo uh, Tasca for donating. Uh, thank you very much, man. I appreciate it. Uh, totally not necessary, guys. Don't do it, um, but I do appreciate it. Okay. All right, uh, let's see. What else do we need to talk about, Robert? Because I want you, by the next time you and I talk, to have started moving this direction. And I, I just need you to remember this. We're not getting any younger. And someday, you, you may or may not be able to do what you do for a lot of different reasons. Burnout, you're tired of it. Uh, clients all of a sudden get weird on you or you, you fall ill and you still have obligations to take care of your family. Let's start the... Uh, uh, you, what are the ages of your kids? Um, there'll be three. I mean, the, the little one will be three, uh, come next week. And yep. the, the older one is five just a week ago. Okay. Let's start the college fund. I don't know if education is free in Germany. It probably is. It's like everything's better than here, but, uh, <laughs> let's just start their education yep. fund. Let's think about it like that because in 13 years or so, you're going to have a big hole burning in your wallet. Mm -hmm. Right. And let's plan for that. We can do this. And I want to help you and everybody else that's watching this to start thinking like this because though times are tough right now and that there's a lot of competition and we feel this downward pressure from from third world or developing countries doing work for a lot cheaper and, and platforms like Fiverr and Upwork and all those places or Elance or 99designs, it's also a great time to be alive because platforms like Teachable and Kajabi exist like Webflow so that you can actually build a platform and be have a direct connection to the customer your audience now you aren't reading the comments because you're talking to me but i'm also reading the comments and people seem to be very excited about this idea of you mentoring people to show them how to do what you do you have a gift man it's time <laughs> okay, to cool. share it it's time to share it otherwise that gift dies with you yeah i, I mean i definitely will i mean it's yeah definitely will <laughs> okay <laughs> Fantastic. So it's I just think, it's just like a lot. Like like right now, it's it? my mind is just like spinning. You know. Okay. I feel like I feel like after Max when like all the all the <laughs> influence, and all the impression, all the ideas. It's just yeah. like it's I'm too like much. just gonna faint right now. It's like oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's take a step back from there. So I mean, you, you've it seems like you know what you need to do. But Chris, like, how would you suggest someone like in prioritizes? Because I feel like a lot of okay. people are having the same. Good issue. question, Mark. Okay, you're hearing Mark. We don't have a camera on him, but Mark's a regular on our, our show. He's he's a regular feature person. While we do that, I want Robert to put on his thinking hat so when we cut back to Robert, we can see him in his thinking hat. Okay, so how do we prioritize this? I didn't realize what I was saying. Hey, hang on. Yes. Do you want me to put on my thinking yeah, hat? Yeah, yeah, yeah. To put on oh, your thinking think hat. Okay, <laughs> that's your cue, Robert. Let us cough loudly when you're ready to come back or something. We'll, we'll know. Actually, uh, because Jonah can see you. All right. So is this overwhelming for you guys? So here's what we do. I'm going to teach you guys a life skill here, okay? Take anything that's complicated. <laughs> I, I, didn't, I didn't hear anything for that moment. No, because we didn't cut <laughs> oh, yeah. to you yet. Oh, oh, he, you he had his see. headphones off. Oh, oh, oh. hang on. He okay, hold on, hold on. Okay, cut to, cut to him. He doesn't have them on yet. Oh, he doesn't have Put it back on, Robert. <laughs> ah, okay, move around so we know it's you. <laughs> <laughs> the stormtrooper is there in we the go. building. All right, we'll cut away now so you can naturally breathe and, and do all that stuff. Okay, excellent. Good job. You, you guys knew it's coming. He's putting on the stormtrooper hat. 
Awesome. Okay, take a big complex problem and then chop it up into little pieces until it becomes manageable. There's a, a phrase that says, inch by inch, everything is a cinch. Hmm. Okay, if you wanted to run a marathon, let's say that's your goal. I want to run a marathon, Chris. You don't just start running the marathon. It doesn't work like that. You just go for a brisk walk for a mile, and then for five miles, and then you increase the pace so it's a little bit faster. It's a light jog. And it becomes a medium jog, and then you go to 10 miles, and you keep adding to that, and eventually you're able to do it. But if all of us sit there and think, I have to run a marathon tomorrow. I have to create a passive income business and capture my knowledge and sell it as a knowledge product. Oh, boy, that's hard. That's really hard. It just so happens. This is not totally intentional, but I think Ben is actually working on an outline to teach people how to do what we do because Ben runs pretty much all the back-end stuff for us to teach you how to build a knowledge product because it's, it's a very hot topic. People want to do this because it's the dream, man. When you're asleep, you make money and you share your gift with the world and you get to help people in real genuine ways. I don't mean those scammy webinars that you see. You know which ones I'm talking about, you guys? The webinars where they teach you how to get rich by getting rich themselves. Like they didn't make their fortune in real estate, but they're going to sell you a program on how to get rich in real estate. And rent Lamborghinis in the background. In yes, the and those are scammy to me. Oh my God, are they scammy? But I know Robert's the genuine thing. He's the real thing because he's taught like just a couple of days ago. He's lectured. He's created a body of work. So you know the guy knows what he's talking about. And that's why I'm encouraging you to do this. So in case some of these watching is like, oh, this is all scammy stuff, you guys, or it's so sick and gross. Yeah, I see you guys typing. I know who you know. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> hey. There's some names there. That's my Lamborghini. <laughs> Hi. Now, for someone like Robert, I mean, should he break those chunks up in the form of something like, okay, build the platform, build the website. No, no, that's too much. This. I think that's you, too much. Okay, start with micro content. Is it? Yeah, okay, very good question. Thank you for keeping me honest, Mark. Thank you. Okay, so what should Robert do? Let's formulate a plan for Robert. A lot of ideas were thrown out. So here's what we want to do. We want to create a graph. So take a piece of paper, fold it in half, and then fold it in half again and open it back up. So you have now four squares, okay? Draw a line in the middle of that four squares, okay? Take each of your ideas and measure them based on impact and effort. So if it's really easy, put it to the far right. If it's really hard, put it to the far left. Okay, so start in the middle. Really easy, move it to the left. And then what's the potential of this taking off? It's going to make a lot of impact, go up high. So if it's easy but low impact, just leave it there and ignore it. If it's hard, if it's hard, I'm sorry, hard is on the side, whatever, I mixed up the sides, okay? If it's really hard and low impact, just throw that away. What's easy and gets impact is the one you want to focus on first. And you want to gradually move from the things that are progressively harder and less impactful. So we want highest impact, and we slowly work our way backwards. So mm -hmm. there were a lot of Roberts. Let's do a quick recap because we're almost out of time here. <laughs> Excuse me. The quick recap is he can create a PDF, a, a little document, a video explaining his process, teaching people how to do what he does. He can create AE templates, stock models. He can create texture packs, lighting rigs, color correction setups, After Effects things, whatever, presets. That's what we want from Robert. He can also mentor somebody and to do some kind of master class and break down his key skill sets and teach and give his secret sauce away. So now let's figure out what he should do first. I think he needs to just identify what direction he wants to move in. So go ahead and measure all those parts and ideas and pick the easiest one and build a plan. So take the one that you think is the easiest and outline it into five steps. What are the five things you need to do to achieve that? Mm -hmm. And that's it. That's your plan. And then you do that. And if it doesn't work, you move on to the next idea. And you keep doing that over and over until you find your hit. Okay, that's what you need to do. So what I would do if I were you guys is whatever you decide to do, just write a really rough outline. Don't try to get the grammar right. Don't try to like be too tricky with your phrasing, like coming up with a cool title because you get stuck on that. Here's the mm -hmm. rule. Here's my rule because I'm not a natural born writer, right? I write and I don't try to fix anything. If it's misspelled, if the phrasing is bad, if I didn't conjugate the verb or whatever, it's just the tenses run, it don't matter. Just write. Work through all of it. Get it done and step away. I'm like, woo, take a breath. And when you're ready, go back in and start editing and massage. You need the raw materials there. 
and I've, I've been uh, the victim or of, the, of my own creation here, is that I would work on it. The first paragraph doesn't sound right. I don't sound that smart. I keep working on the first paragraph. And then I just run out of energy. I totally run out of energy. And I'm going to share with you guys in real time here something I'm working on right now for a quick article I want to write. Okay? Let me see if I can find it, and then we'll share my screen here. I think it's called is it Mental Fitness. Let's see where it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I guess I can share this. Let me uh, get my screen set up. Mark, what else? Do we need to talk about anything else? And maybe Robert has additional thoughts or... No, no other pressing questions here. Okay, cool. That's good to know because we're almost out of time. Okay. I almost don't want to share this with you guys because I feel like I'm going to give away too much. But Matthew suggested it's something here. He's wondering if uh, mm -hmm. we could just do a one-pager and send that out as a PDF. 100%. Yeah. 100%. So here's what you do. You can, cr you can create like a one-pager PDF, super easy for you to make, and you don't sell that. But maybe you ask them for their email. Mm -hmm. Like if you're into marketing, it could be a five killer headline to get people to open up your email. It could be something like that. Mm -hmm. And a lot of this could be gained through research. Now, you're selling creativity and know-how, so it's going to sound very different. All right, I I'm going to share this. Why not, guys? Let's just do it. So let's cut to my screen. I'm going to show you guys in real time. So I'm using Notion uh, because Matthew loves it. He's got um, the deep relationship with Notion, but here I am. I'm trying to still figure it out. So I've been thinking a lot about how we practice or preach physical fitness, not so much mental fitness. So I've been working on a mental fitness program. I've, I've been thinking about this with my son, and I keep running little exercises and playing mental games with him to challenge him to shape his world to his point of view that reality is overrated, to shape it, to control the lens in which you look at everything. So we want to be able to take external inputs and reshape them into our minds so we only see what we want to see. This is a reality distortion field or something like that. So I thought I was going to ask a group of people, I'm going to say a common phrase that you have known, that you guys know. Okay, so everybody get ready to do this with me, okay? Um, let's cut away from my screen. I don't want to give away all the answers. Great. You guys ready? So I'm going to say something, and don't think, just write the answer, okay? I want you guys to type in what, what you think how to finish the sentence. If you charge that much, the clients will find... What's the answer, guys? Write that in there. Okay? Guys, I need to see the chat window go crazy right now. If you charge that much, the clients will find... Okay, they're not responding. There's going to be a little delay. Is there a little delay? <laughs> okay. I'll do that one. I'll do the next one, okay? Yep. We've always done it this way. The new way can't possibly... Right in. Mark, you can play along. Okay. Why don't you trigger them? There we go. Now it's yeah, starting someone to go. Someone cheaper. Now yes. Okay, you keep going. All right? So now we see that that's what's happening. Okay? So I've given you guys two quick expressions. If you charge that much, the clients will find... You might write in someone cheaper, someone else, whatever. Here's another one. We've always done it this way. The new way can't possibly work, succeed, be better. Be better, right? Yeah, better. Okay, so that's what we've been trained. So I want to retrain your brain. So now when I say these expressions, I want everybody to change it into a positive statement. So I want you to disrupt your own pattern of thinking. So if you charge that much, the clients will find that it's worth it. Yes! I'm oh, sorry, I just blew out of your eardrum. I'm so sorry, guys. I'm sorry, Internet. Right? If you charge that much, the clients will find it's worth it. If you charge that much, the clients will find the money if they value it. If yep. you charge that much, the clients will find the lower price competitor suspicious. You see? We can do this, you guys. Here's another one. We've always done it this way. The new way can't possibly... We've done it this way. The new way can't possibly <laughs> be faster, easier. It has to be positive. The new way can't possibly pos positive. Cost can't possibly fail. You got to retrain your brain, you guys. And right. I have a whole list. I'm working on this. And it's a series of word exercises that we can do in a group and image things and things that we can do. I need to retrain your brain. So there it is, guys. It's, it's funny, actually. You really have to, like, you really have to think. Like, you okay, have to so, think. Like, we saw it in your face. Okay, because, like, of course, like, what? Uh, okay, yeah. And then right. you cannot fail. Right? right, right. So I play this game with my son all the time. 
I insult him. He throws it back at me, and we just keep going back and back and forth. And it's awesome. We're playing mental ping pong with each other because he needs the training. I need to build strong, independent people, my children, you guys, to be able to take on the world because the world is going to drag you down. I think it's called like that crab mentality. You guys know what I'm talking about? I learned this from uh, Sean West. I forget his last name. Um, he told me like there's this crab mentality. I'm like, what is that? He's like, well, in a bucket, there's a bunch of crabs. And any one of them can climb out. But as soon as someone gets close to getting out of the bucket, the other crabs drag him back down. Mm. And that's what's happening. So people in your life, they mean well. They want to, They want you to succeed. They don't want you to get hurt. So they just caution you on every single thing. They think about what could go wrong. How could this fail? Somebody's trying to fool you, cheat you, take advantage of you. Why would you do that? That's crazy. Why would you give up a great job for a new opportunity where it's so unproven? So that's what, what people do. They mean well, but they drag you back into the bucket and it hurts. It hurts your progress. It hurts your ability to try new ideas. So I have to retrain people. So that's what I'm working on. I'm working on real time. I'm going to share. So maybe this is um, not very good. I don't know. But that's how you begin. You just write some ideas down. And this came to me yesterday morning when I was taking a shower. And I'm like, I got to get on the computer and just write some of this down. And so there you are guys you have shower, it. Are you an ideas in the shower guy? Because that's... Yes. Yeah, I'm an idea in the shower, I'm an idea in the drive, and I'm an idea when I wake up kind of guy. Right. And I love conversation. So when I talk to you, Robert, I don't realize there's a problem or a solution because I just walk around like everything's fine, everything works in life. And then you tell me something like, oh, I don't want to do this thing and it just feels salesy or I, have, I don't have time. In that conversation, new ideas come up for new mm -hmm. products or courses or content or something. That's why I read almost every single comment that comes to me through social media. Oh, because you do? Okay. I do. I, I read and I respond to almost all of them. And some at some point I can't do it because it, the volume is out of control. But mm -hmm. that's how I know where the pain is. And if I can solve the pain, if I can close the gap, if I can make the gap a little bit easier to get across the other side, then that's what I do. Right? So I want to talk about this real quick and I think we need to wrap up the show. Anna is saying, install a shower at work? Question mark. Uh, yes, we already have a shower at work, but that's not the key. So here's what happens. Uh, psychologists have figured this thing out. When you do something that doesn't re require a lot of effort from you, you enter into like an autonomic state. Like you can just do things like driving, washing the dishes. You've done it a thousand times before, right? And I think, I forgot the term. Uh, Fabian was telling me this yesterday. But there's focus time and there's diffuse time. And in the diffuse time where things are a little bit blurrier, it's where your creativity comes alive. And a different TED Talk spoke about this. A different speaker said, when you're doing these really mundane things, when you're in the, the bottom part of the boredom, like it's so boring for you, your mind enters into an autobiographical state. It starts to look at your past, your present, and it plans for the future. So the clarity is there. So, Robert, if you're working all the time, if you're busy running around chasing your little kids and doing all kinds of things, you never enter into that state. So the, I don't know if it's alpha waves or whatever your brain is, you never get to activate that part because you're just chasing the dragon. You're just trying to get the work done. You're making ends meet. This is where mm -hmm. we need to create space for ourselves, right? So you have to buy back some of your time. It mm -hmm. might mean that you make a little less money. It might mean that you don't take on that one client that, might hurt you financially just for a little bit, but for the long term, it's good for you. Okay. Mm. That state of mind happened actually on the, when I travel because I travel quite a lot. Yes. But you know when when you're in a plane and you basically can't, you're not online and you can't do yes. this, can't do that. Then then um, you just reminisce about things, or when you're alone in your in your room or whatever, which rarely happens at home, obviously. But um, when you when you travel and this this happens a lot, I exactly know what you mean. Right. So we can probably create this, and I'm the same way. When I was on the plane, you're right. You can't check your phone. There's no point. You're literally strapped into your seat, and then there's this white noise. So I, I'm thinking about this, Robert. If you bought another chair, if you face that chair into the corner, into a white corner, and put on white noise headphones, not noise-canceling headphones, but white noise, and you just sat there, and you didn't let yourself get out for one hour, see, and you had a notepad, and you just leave the notepad there, I wonder what kind of brilliant things that can come pouring out of your mind. Mm -hmm. And then... And then if you mine your own content, meaning I pulled this out of my head, now I looked at it, I put it on the graph, I measured it, and I take action and produce something, 
you would have an idea factory. Mm -hmm. And that would be pretty dope. That's true. Yeah? Okay. I like that. Yeah. All right. Good. So, you know what? It's 1226 here where we're at. I think we need to get out of here. I don't have a summary for you guys, but uh, before I want to say goodbye to Robert Ranitsky, you guys check him out on YouTube and everywhere else. I want to say thank you to all of you who are staying in, who have made it to the very end, and especially to our sustaining members. The, the credit list is kind of out of control now. We have to kind of wrap up the show. Here's Robert's information. You go to Ranitsky.com. The H is silent. He's based out of Munich, Germany. He's a super awesome human being. So if you guys see him at a conference, come up, say hi to him. He's old school influencer, you know? Let's get him into the new school. Let's get him into the future. <laughs> and he's HR animator on Instagram and HR animation on Twitter. I think that's it. We got to wrap up the show. Thank you very much for tuning in, you guys. Robert, thanks for jumping Thank on. And, and I, so wanna, much, I want a progress report from you in January. All right, let's do that. Let's do that, okay? Let me know what's cool. up, and let's see what's going on, and we'll do another episode. Even if you're stuck, let me know. I didn't get to it. Here's what happened in life, and let's just have this conversation continue on. Okay, guys? That's cool. it for our show. Let's get out of here. Thank I you so I, much. Thank you, man. I have some music. I think 